Did you know that your city council, your school board, your water district, and countless other government agencies are mortgaging your home and your future? And not only that, they're doing so without even informing you or providing you the opportunity to vote on it. Stay tuned. We'll hear about this monumental secret and ask John Kupal of the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers, is this a major ripoff or what? Next on full disclosure. And they have created these instruments like certificates of participation that they look like bonds, they walk like bonds, they quack like bonds, they have all the characteristics of bonds, but they have been created solely for the purpose of getting around the voter approval requirements of the California Constitution and of Proposition 13. Well, that looks like a bond to you, it looks like a bond to me, it looks like a bond to any normal person. But because they did not get voter approval, we now see local boards of supervisors, local city councils, using COPs to get a lot of cash up front to pay off their political patronage friends and then stick future generations of taxpayers without any voter approval of this long-term financial obligation. So that has been the problem we've had with COPs and, and lease revenue bonds is that these instruments of indebtedness have been created solely for the purpose of cutting out of the political process the very people who will be repaying it, and that's the California taxpayer. How can this be? How can the taxpayers be denied their right to vote on public indebtedness? The law has been carefully crafted by those who have a vested interest in the process. And by those who have a vested interest, I mean those in local governments, the political uh, uh, elected officials, bureaucrats, and of course those involved in the bond business, the bond underwriters, the bond councils, the bond marketers, um, they have a cottage industry and they get a lot of money out of it. The last thing they want is some voter approval process to screw, screw it up. We wondered how the fees for bond brokers and underwriters compare between the non-voter approved COP bonds and the general obligation bonds which are approved by the voters. Is one more profitable to the financial industry than the other? Now, the fees, they're substantial. You know, they depend on the amount of the issuance. But make no mistake about it, Leslie, there is a lot of money being made, and these people do not want an impediment to their making money, and that impediment is getting voter approval. We wondered why the LA Unified School District has had to resort to using COP bonds to fund their projects. We asked John Kopal, why does the LAUSD always seem to be out of money? You know, the LA Unified School District has a budget that's higher, that's greater than 20 states. It's huge. It's monolithic. It is just a massive entity that we believe has ill-served the parents and children of the city of Los Angeles. If one adds not only the operational funds they get, which works out to over $10,000 per student per year, but adds on top of that the capital revenues available to them, uh, where the children of this school district should be getting a Cadillac education, and they're clearly not. Uh, this is one of the most underperforming school districts uh, in the nation. Um, it is, and quite frankly, from a taxpayer perspective, it, it is a travesty. The LA Unified School District continues to be a poster child for mismanagement and bad use of taxpayer funds. Among the proposed uses for the $3.95 billion bond is the repayment of Certificate of Participation non-voter approved bonds. This seems to be like a shell game, we asked. Mr. Kupal, is this legal? Prop 39 lowered the vote threshold for general obligation bonds for school districts from two-thirds to 55 percent. One of the provisions of that, however, did say that they had to specify the projects being constructed, and I don't believe that repayment of COPs is a legitimate reason for a, a, le a legitimate purpose under Prop 39 bonds. I'll have to go back and check, but it seems to me that if, they, if they've already stated their intention to repay COPs 
unvoted debt with now voted debt, then that is not a legitimate, uh, there may be a legal issue here that we'll have to explore. Full Disclosure recently interviewed L.A. School Board member David Tukoski and asked him if it was legal for the board to issue certificates of participation, COPs, non-voter approved bonds, in order to get around Proposition 13's mandate for a vote of the people. Here's what he had to say. Uh, absent somebody challenging, and I know clearly we have a, a great organization, the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. They haven't challenged LA Unified's issuance of COPs. Uh, no private uh, entity or, or private attorney general or other government entity has challenged our use of COP. So, Then we asked Mr. Kopal if he's ever considered a legal challenge to the L.A. Unified School Board's use of certificates of participation, COP. I, th I think it would be something we would consider doing. I mean, we have always looked at COPs as a potential area for litigation because we believe, certainly in spirit, they violate the voter approval requirements mandated by the California Constitution. I think taxpayer uh, activists at the state level, our organization, and at the local level just need to be active and to raise their voice and to understand that democracy is not free. You have to participate. Well, thank you.